do want to interact with people. Um, if you guys have Skype, I'm Canine Disc on Skype. You can Skype me, get into the, the podcast if you want. Um, so, um, shoot. Um, what constitutes a throw? I think we covered that. Um, I think next on the agenda, Jack, is uh, Club Updog. Do you want to introduce that and let us know um, what the um, what the segment is going to be about? Sure. So yeah, we we've um, if this is the first podcast you're listening to, um, and probably is, we've only had a couple, but uh, hopefully maybe you've caught the earlier one too. But um, we're gonna Ron and I are going to uh, have different segments that we'll revisit on uh, topics that will come up frequently. I'm sure. Um, so one is Club Up Dog. It is, um, it's not about the clubbing life. Um, that's, those are days gone by, pretty much, for me. Yeah. Um, those are some good moves, though, Ron. Right. Uh, so it's about, it's about um, helping, helping folks involved in clubs how to run their events and how to organize things and different ways that they can approach stuff. And... Uh, Again, on the discussion page recently, I think this might have been last week, Kat can probably uh, clarify, but there was a conversation about level two, and when would you want to play level two versus level one, and then there started to be a discussion about, um, you know, that uh, some players want feel the push to move out of level one because they don't want to take awards away from a level one player because they're a higher level player than maybe most of the folks. Right. And really level one and level two isn't what a club should really be um, using to kind of separate players like that and to provide more opportunities for um, awarding good, you know, good rounds out there. So what we do locally and what, what's in the general rules for updog is actually it talks about divisions and um if you're running a local event we do this at up up diff as well but if you're running a local event there are a number of divisions that you can separate your teams into to be able to recognize more people and recognize what they're able to do so like um we typically have a novice division and an intermediate division so our High-level players can still play level one games, and our lower-level players, are some of our beginners and things like that, they can still be recognized for their great rounds um, through the novice division. We also, depending on how many people show up, we have a youth division. And um, but there's there's any any type of division that a uh, any you know distinction or separation of the the teams, whether it be dogs or humans can be decided upon by the clubs. Like I've heard of some clubs, you know, looking into having a senior division or something like that with folks that might be older and maybe can't compete with the youthful players. And then of course divisions of dogs, we have height divisions and of dog, so that uh, a little tiny papillon doesn't have to be up against a Malinois that's able to run, you know, three, four times faster than the papillon and cover ground like that quickly and get a higher score. So when if you're a, a host or you belong to a club that hosts, these are things you definitely want to bring up to the people that um, you know organize the awards and organize the recognition from the different games so that you can recognize as many uh, folks as, as you want to. That's awesome. Um, the, uh, the level one and level two is... Uh, is an interesting discussion. Um, you know, the divisions I think are um, are terrific. Um, they're a great way to get around that. Um, you know, we hit on this uh, last week uh, with the uh, introduction of level two. Is it for you? Um, you guys can check that out on the Updog Challenge YouTube page or on the podcast page. Um, we did a few minutes on that. Uh, busted that out in its own separate little. Um, little segment um the uh, the games are very different level one level two you know and i don't think anybody should feel pressured to uh to to play one over the other um and if the clubs are feeling like they're pushing people or the people in the clubs are feeling like they're getting pushed into 
uh, a division that maybe they don't want to play. I think divisions is a great way, terrific way to uh, to get around that. Um, and uh, you know, between the heights and then you know the team or the handler experience. Um, do you think that should go based on handler experience or uh, team experience, Jack? Do you have a Do you have a preference on that? I mean, we we've got players locally that um, that will play intermediate division with their experienced dog, and then play novice division with a brand new dog, um, especially you know like a puppy, something along those lines that they they know there's no way that they're going to compete at a higher level in the intermediate division. And, um, and we don't really, you know, other than, other than a division like the youth division, where obviously we don't let, uh, you know, Gary Duke, who's in our club, um, and, you know, is uh, pushing 29, we don't let him be in the youth division. But uh, other than that, other than age restrictions, we really don't, we don't force a human into one division or the other, and, and we kind of let the um, the club members. It's funny because the club members will call out somebody sometimes when you right. know they're in a division that they shouldn't be in. Bagger. And, and, yeah, they'll exactly. I mean, I remember. <laughs> I remember one time. Uh, it was funny amongst um, some of the female members of the group. They got on somebody that they felt shouldn't be in the novice division and, and gave them a good ribbing, you know. And it was all in good fun and everything. Um, but also, a player could move up to the intermediate division, and if they get blown away after a couple events and they realize, gosh, yeah. I moved up thinking I was ready for this, but I'm really not, um, the cool part is they can move back down. There's nothing saying as soon as you move up, you got to stay there or anything like that. You know, another another really cool thing about Updog in particular with the achievements uh, and whatnot is that um, most of the time you're not really competing for raw points and the placement. Um, you know, and I know some of us are, and some of us are at different times or in different games, but, uh, I don't feel the, uh, the driving need to win or to, to smash it on, uh, uh, on any of the games. I mean, at the finals I did, I, I wanted to do well, but I didn't, um, I don't feel like I have to, uh, perform max points all the time. I can, I can get value and, uh, experience, um, and, you know, pleasure and accomplishment from doing a good job in a way that, that makes me and my dog, uh, look good, like that we want to do, you know, I don't, I don't feel that need to have the big, um, the big points or the big wins. So I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I agree too, and that's how I feel when I play. And obviously, as somebody who who started up dog, uh, it's probably a little bit different. Me too. I, I don't feel comfortable at all taking a placement, um, at, especially locally where I'm running an event too. Um, but it's fun just to you know kind of place yourself in a division with a, you know peers that you feel have similar skills and whose dogs have similar skills. And, you know, then you can kind of see, like, where are you at? You know, do you have some work to do? Are you doing pretty well compared with the rest of the folks that are out there? And it, yeah, I think it gives you um, some goals to shoot for, too. You know, did, did you see so-and-so? Uh, Chris went out there with his dog, Twist, and got a triple quad. I'm only two catches away from a triple quad. I need to work on that or whatever. You right. Know, like, um, so I think placing yourself into a peer group and having the ability to move back and forth amongst those groups, too, um, is part of the whole, you know, expand and achieve, achieve part of, of Updog. So um, it's kind of fun that way. I know I've been in other organizations where if you if something happens, like if you decide to move up, you have to stay there. Or if you win something one day, if you happen to have an amazing day, right. and it fell, fell right your way, sometimes it's like, yay, I did, oh, the what? Quad. I got to move up to what? And I got to stay in that division? It's almost like you wish you would have not won. Right. Um, so I like the fact that you know you can move back and forth, and, and um, I think that's good for our players. Awesome, awesome. I agree. Uh, I don't see any questions coming in on that. Um, although I do think it's it's totally something that we could uh, we could revisit, probably should revisit, um, just because. Uh, 
I think it's always going to be an issue. And if it isn't talked about frequently or accessible um, discussions um, available, you know, it, it would just be a good thing to revisit, I think. Um, I, did, I, I got a quick uh, tech question for you, Ron. Uh -huh. So I was just thinking, you know, like I know that, that this is kind of a soft opening with our podcast and there's not a lot of people that know about it at this moment. Right. But, um, you know, if I know these, these things get posted, the, the podcast gets posted and then uh, they can find it like on iTunes and um, uh, YouTube and um, iTunes, Google uh, Play, like every, pretty much all the podcasting things. Yeah. So are there places where they can, so if I listen to this later and then I have a question about something like that and I'd like it to be maybe touched on again or something, can they... Can they comment somewhere? Is there a place where they can do that on some of these? Not on not on the podcasting stuff. Uh, that's that's okay. kind of what uh, kind of what I'm relying on YouTube for, right? Like the uh, the the ability, first of all, for us to do video, right? And we do some things um, with video that are pretty cool, so um, that's kind of important. Uh, and then. Um, the other thing is just the, uh, the kind of community uh, access that you get with, um, with um, YouTube, you know, the ability for people to, to hit that? us up. Oh, and uh, Kat just reminded me too, Ron, that we've got that Cognito form that she created. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, yep. For suggestions and questions, but I'm not sure where that link is um, housed. The... Uh, there is questions, um, uh, suggestions, form. Thank you, Kat, uh, both times for doing it and for reminding me. Um, on our web series page on Positive Vibe, and Kat, I do not know where you put it, so um, wherever you have it, and then uh, PositiveVibePVibe.com. Uh, there's a web series link in the menu. Um, it's right at the top there. All three of us get it. We'll we'll get your uh, your question or your suggestion via email. Yeah, and I know that once we get everything worked out, which I think we're we're on our way to doing that, um, more stuff will be posted on Updog Challenge uh, as well, and we can post the links there and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The the website stuff is uh is it's a little difficult to uh, to navigate, like to get it all on the web um, on the actual web page and stuff. Uh, that's the link uh, in the chat, and here is the link to um, to the form. Yeah. Um, so you can grab that form there. Um, again, that's suggestions and uh, like questions to have. Um, questions or topics that you'd like to see covered. Um, okay. Kat actually said we have a couple there, so we'll have to take a look at those and hit them up next week, maybe. Sweet. That's awesome. Um, I'm super